Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. I am so glad you're here. You guys, I've been revisiting some videos and reacting to strange things that I see and hear in them, and you guys seem to really enjoy it, so I've been wanting to go back over this one. I use these pictures quite often because, well, they're chilling, and I think we get a real glimpse of Megan right here, uh, staring down Catherine, Princess of Wales. This was February 2018. Just a reminder that she and Doofus married in May of 2018. So a few months before they got married. Okay. So think about that and think about what she said about not being welcomed. Well, this was a sign that they were welcoming her into the family, allowing her to, um, join such events like that. So that's something that pops out. The other thing I keep thinking about is the the theme that came up a lot at this event was mental health. Okay. Well, we know what they said. They claimed that they were unable to seek treatment because I don't whatever reason that they made up the palace wouldn't let them. Even though he said in his book Spare he had his therapist on speed dial. They pretended like that wasn't an option for Megan. He never could explain why or why he couldn't get her help or just take her out if that was the case. Nope, no explanation. Nothing they say makes sense. I don't know why I'm trying, but I thought we could watch this. I'm going to spare you a lot of her word salad because it makes me want to bang my head against the wall. We're just going to hit some lowlights here. Just some things that I want to point out that were just so odd about this. This was one of the first times we saw the quote fab four, if you will. Remember, that was a thing back then. Here's the thing. It is widely recognized that Megan dominated this event, and not in a good way. She focused so heavily on her own views, her experiences, and it seemed to overshadow or attempted to overshadow the contributions of everybody else, including Hasnoballs. It's I mean, it just took away from the event itself. And again, it became all about her. This is one of the first times I remember hearing the word salad thinking, what? What is she actually saying? The other thing worth mentioning is Harry. He seems so cranky through this thing. Uh, and again, I can spare you from having to li listen to Doofus too much. But that was something that I noticed and I started Googling it. Other people seem to note that he seemed less engaged or enthusiastic during the forum. Um, let me cut through the BS and say, no, he seemed like a whiny, petulant, you know what, a spare prick that we've <laughs> come to know of him, right? He seemed very pouty. Uh, I feel like that's probably a glimpse behind the scenes as well. So as I was saying in my speech, there's a lot of foundations out there with an incredible amount of money, an incredible amount of um, ability to, to move things forwards. But I think what we can bring as the Royal Foundation is that convening effort. And I think if you put some of the big foundations in the world together, along with our convening power of the Royal Foundation, and if we focus on certain big issues, ho hopefully global, I think we can make a real, really big difference. So no, I'm, I'm really excited about the future in that sense. And Duchess, what are you most excited about when it comes to the future of your work with the Foundation? There's, there's sort of lots that I think I'm hugely excited about with, with the Foundation from the Foundation's perspective. We were mentioning before about working together, you know, looking for William as well, looking at sort of long term prospect is, you know, imagine if we were able to do sort of a heads together campaign with another generation of members of the royal family. I think that's so exciting to think that with so many more of, of, of us working on the same cause or similar causes, we could make a, a real impact. Um, Lovely. That's it. That's what they're talking about. How the Royal Foundation can make this global impact, what initiatives they're working on, what they've done, what, you know, where this was dreamed up, all that stuff. Megan, you touched on it before. Mm -hmm. You have, it's well known, you've championed the empowerment of women and young girls and promoting their self-worth. How do you hope to continue that work with the Royal Foundation? I'd like to point out in the little bit we've heard of that bullying report, which I'm dying to get my hands on, Jason Knopf pointed out that she usually had someone to mount Megan in her sights that she wanted to go after. I believe she, I believe that it was alleged that it was usually female that she liked to go after. I also believe the allegation of tea throwing was directed at a female. I'd also like to point out how she has continued to harass and torment Catherine, Princess of Wales, including having her followers go after her. We know all the disgusting things they've continued to say, and Megan doesn't speak out against it. So you talked to me about empowering women. 
and how that's going. And let's talk about the African parks and how you and your idiot husband are still silent on all of that, hoping it'll just go away, not speaking up for women, while you give speeches about speaking up for women. Um, yes, I mean, I think that knowing that I've, I've just been here for three months, right? <laughs> and in that You've amount of time, for, well, but with that said, for me, it's very important to once you hit the ground running, even if you're doing it quietly behind the scenes, which is what I've focused my energy on thus far, is meeting with the right people, meeting with the right organizations behind the scenes quietly. The ground running. Doesn't that back up and support the claims that we've heard that she was not interested in being part of the royal family, meaning not even to have an advisor? It's alleged that she said when offered, uh, I believe they were, uh, I believe that the queen offered, uh, was it Sophie? I think, Duchess of Edinburgh, uh, to show her the ropes. And she's like, no, I have Harry. Can you imagine? That's going to be your, your guide. Learning as much as I can so that I can maximize the opportunity we have here to really make an impact. I think what's interesting is I hear a lot of people saying when speaking about girls' empowerment, finding and knowing their worth, or women's empowerment as well. You'll all this makes me sick. Again, African parks. It's alleged that they not only contacted and let Harry know what was going on, they actually wrote to, the women wrote to Megan to beg her to do something to help. And nothing has been done or said about the situation. People say, well, you're helping women find their voices. And I fundamentally disagree with that because women don't need to find a voice. They have a voice. They need to feel empowered to use it. And people need to be encouraged to listen. Oh, I'm dripping in the, I'm drowning in the hypocrisy of it all. Sitting next to the woman that, in my opinion, she has bullied for years and gone after and targeted and had her followers targeted, targeting all the things. But also, I'd like to point out that this quote, in my opinion, she's ripped right off another woman. <laughs> There's this woman, Sonia Sanchez. She's a poet and activist from, I believe it was the 1960s, who said something very similar. Women have a voice. They have power. Uh, they are mothers. They are strong. They are not afraid. They shouldn't be afraid to speak out and speak up. So she was advocating as um, for women's empowerment, social justice, that sort of thing. And then Megan comes along says these things, does the opposite, steals a quote from another woman. There you go. And I think right now in the climate that we're seeing with so many campaigns, I mean, with Me Too and Time's Up, there is no better time than to really continue to shine a light on women feeling empowered and people really helping to support them, men included in that. I mean, it, it makes such a tremendous difference. So, um, yeah, just... Um, I guess we wait a couple months and then we can hit the ground running. But Hit the ground running once again. Just saying these things that have no meaning. Please don't make that into a drinking game. You'd be on the floor. Just like every time she cries on the floor, you'd be on the floor. Uh, dominating the conversation. I feel like she's making it more about her own personal views and, and her agenda. Um, she's... This lack of humility, lack of awareness as per usual, making the focus on herself. I, I just can't. I really can't. I'm, I'm struggling to even get through this. So we're going to get to the fun parts. Until then, I, I'm pretty excited. <laughs> but like you said, I mean, you've been here for three. Yeah, yeah wedding true. first. <laughs> get that done. We but can multitask. Have, having okay. Think about what they just said. You may have missed it. He goes, wedding first. She put out her hand to stop him and said, we can multitask. Until then, I, I'm pretty excited. <laughs> but like you said, I mean, you've been here for three. Yeah, yeah wedding true. first. <laughs> Get that done. We but can multitask. Have, having Showing you again. He says wedding first. She said, we can multitask. It's fine. Just to mind here, the multiple books I've read about this, uh, I believe it was Tom Bowers especially, he talks about... When they were getting married about that, it would have been about this time. Um, it's believed that Oprah reached out to her then to maybe tell a story. And she said, not yet. So it's just to me showing more of it's all part of the plan. She's got it all planned out. What's going to happen and what, what they're going to do and how they're going to take off. I have been fortunate enough to meet with some incredible women 
and organizations in general in the UK that are doing work here, but then also knowing that some of the work that I've done in the past has been in Commonwealth countries like Rwanda, India. So I did play that part back for you to see, but you didn't miss anything, meaning I didn't jump ahead. She just decided to keep talking. This is a, what were they calling a forum, suppose it, whatever it is, forum, World Foundation Forum for the four of them, four of them. Um, and she's now completely made it about herself. Like, oh, I thought we were talking, you know, mental health initiatives. Let me tell you what I did in Rwanda, right? I mean, it's not a shocker. It's just interesting to see it, even in early days. Couldn't even pretend like she gave a crap about any of the others, including Hasno Balls. So this reach, I think, can have, um, can have some really nice legs to it once we can start. But Off I guess, <laughs> yes, exactly, <laughs> to be continued. Okay, I look forward to picking up on that conversation yeah, me too. Uh, later. Thank you. If I were skeptical, and I am skeptical, one could argue that that's her saying, hey, just wait, we're going to do some shit. You're going to want to talk to us. And this extra funny because that is so her and so everything we know of her, right, to plant these seeds like this. We've talked about that at length. Uh, dropping hints on things. I feel like this is her dropping a hint. Just wait till you see what I do. Because she thought she would be, well, to quote Harry, a real rock star, right? That she'd be great at everything and then... I think she thought they'd go to California and they'd be great at everything. And then, of course, we've seen how spectacularly it is failing. All right, we're jumping ahead because I can't take Crayon Eater over here giving us a 10-minute speech. I can't. Um, he goes on to talk about mental health. Again, I point to directly contradicting what he said in the interview in the book that mental health was not available to Megan. And why was it not? He can't explain. He just contradicts himself. Then she goes on to ask a question about, uh, it doesn't matter, just like mental health and what their ongoing stuff is. They go into online mental health, which made me think, oh, is that where all of a sudden Harry and Megan are getting their ideas for online policing? I don't know, just a thought. They rip everything off. I don't think suppressing the First Amendment was what William and Catherine had in mind, but I think Harry and Megan use things like that to their advantage, however they can. Um, I think, as, as, as alluded to earlier, Catherine, Catherine was the one who put the sort of joined the dots together for all of us. She was the one who came up with the, the idea and the, and, and the concept, as it were, because I mean, Harry and I had never, never thought about doing a campaign as such before. And when you tackle mental health, it was very difficult to know where to start. It's such a big issue and it's so entrenched in society in a negative way, sadly, that we weren't quite sure how we would do it and how long it would take. So. I got to give Prince William a shout out. You know, I'm a fan, especially of my Catherine. But um, this is the second time he said this. And I love it. He's giving Catherine the credit for Heads Together and how much she came up with the idea. And I found articles supporting that and that she put in so much work into this. And I just think that's wonderful. Again, look at the difference. So we're finding out that through William that Catherine came up with the idea and that she's been the driving force behind it. Catherine's not there patting herself on the back, giving a speech to everybody about how wonderful she is. Megan can't stop talking about herself and is bringing up Rwanda and stuff. I'm surprised she didn't say she's from Rwanda at this point. Uh, but uh, it's just interesting to see the difference. After there. a number of conversations, uh, doing a campaign was seen as the, the quickest and most effective way to make a, make a difference and make an impact. Um, really. Megan, what did you make of it watching from afar? Oh my, I mean, I think probably the same sentiment that most people had. Obviously, happening here, the stigmatization surrounding mental health is different and unique in every territory. But I was in Canada at the time, and I just remember how much news coverage it was getting. And just in that alone, it was getting such a conversation point happening amongst people. Um, and I think, again, to the point that they've all touched on earlier, it was because of that togetherness, because you had so many different organizations under this umbrella. And each of them is shining this spotlight on it. So I think in North America, at least from that standpoint, I remember being, it being a very large point of conversation, and I would imagine in other countries as well. It made such a huge impact. It was very impressive to watch from afar. And I have to ask you, all the work you do together is great, but working together as family, do you ever have disagreements about things? Think about the timing of this. This is in the lead up to that spectacle called the wedding, right? And think about all the hell we are now aware of that Meghan has continued to put Catherine through as well as Charlotte, Princess Charlotte through, and everybody else. 
And so this question, the fact that Catherine didn't leap up and scream, I, you know what? She has more uh, restraint than I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Healthy, healthy disagreement. Okay, the last thing you disagreed on, how do you resolve it? Uh, I, I can't remember, they come so thick and full. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but it's, but it's, Is it resolved? We don't know. Oh, that. we don't know. It'll never be resolved, never, because Megan will bring it up uh, and or lie about it, and Harry will write about it in his book, so no, it'll never be resolved. Well, you're putting on a great show if it's not. <laughs> um. No, but it's really, I think it's really good that, the, that we've got, you know, four four different personalities and you know we've all got that same that same passion to want to make a difference um, but you know different different opinions and I think those opinions work really really well. Harry's only opinion is which cream to put on his frozen todger. That's it. I can't handle any more. That's actually the end of this thing so I'm gonna let you go here. It's a lot. They're hard to watch. I love Catherine and William. I don't know what else to say. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. I'm cringing so hard from this one. This one hit me hard. Let me know your thoughts. I think because all the pictures that I use from this event where they're glaring at Catherine and knowing, again, everything she's gone through and, and everything that, that they've put her through, I just find them absolutely disgusting. And uh, yeah, I'm going to end this one here. Thank you guys as always. Thank you for watching. Thank you for reacting. Thank you for everything. The comments, it all means so much to me. I hope you enjoyed this one. And I can't wait to bring you more stuff like this. Have the best day. Don't be like Harold and Fraud. We can do better. <laughs> we can. Take care. Bye-bye.